Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series starting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video we're going to be looking at what are temporal parts, looking at not one but two positions in philosophy, perdurantism and endurantism. So, first off, let's look at parts. Most people think that objects can be divided into parts, and that those parts can have different properties. The tires of my car might be round and made of rubber, the windshield might be trapezoidal and made of glass, and the gas tank might be a rectangular prism and made of metal. This is not a contradiction. My car is not at the same time both round and square, both rubber and glass. Rather, one part is round and one part is square. One part is made of metal, and one part is made of glass. The question at hand today is whether a similar move can be used to deal with many of the contradictions posed by time and identity. You have different properties now than you did an hour ago, a day ago, or a year ago. You might be hungry now, while you an hour ago was not hungry. You might have long hair now, but you a year ago had short hair. Some philosophers see this as an analogous issue to the problem presented by spatial parts. Basically, there's a problem with you both being hungry and not hungry, you both having long hair and not having long hair. To resolve this and other issues, they propose that in addition to spatial parts, objects have temporal parts. In fact, at any point in time, you are not the whole you. Instead, you're just a part of yourself. That part is hungry. Another part of you exists an hour ago. That part is not hungry. Temporal parts simply take time as another dimension, like space, and claim that individuals have temporal parts as well as spatial ones. Some people are very sympathetic to the idea that temporal parts exist, and that most objects have them. People that believe this are called perdurantists. They are committed to the claim that normal objects have temporal parts. For the perdurantist, nothing is ever wholly present, but rather objects are four-dimensional. When you refer to a tree, you are talking about a four-dimensional object. Talking about that tree now is the same as talking about a branch of that tree, in that when you're talking about a branch, you're talking about a spatial part of that tree, but talking about that whole tree now, you're talking about a temporal part of that tree. Perdurantists might not say that an object changes over time. You do not grow older. We simply are observing an older part of you. Any way you grow more, any more than you would grow more leg-like if we were looking at your leg as opposed to your head. According to the perdurantist, while this position may seem counterintuitive, it solves many problems of identity over time. For each philosophical position, generally there's a complement. In this case, those that oppose perdurantists are called endurantists. Endurantists claim that objects do not have temporal parts. For the endurantist, you are wholly present right now. There is no part of you that is five years older or younger. If you're hungry now, there's no part of you that's not hungry. At least, temporally. This may make explaining the idea of change difficult. How can all of you be hungry now, and yet all of you be not hungry an hour ago? That seems to be possibly a contradiction, if we don't have a good strong temporal logic to work with. They might respond with an appeal to presentism that claims only the present exists, though there are quite a few problems with that view when it comes to talking about anything that's not in the present. They also might claim that all of these properties are relational to time. You might have the property of being hungry relative to noon, but not have the property of being hungry relative to 10 a.m., though that's going to get quite cumbersome. There are a range of other such puzzles that the perdurantist claims to be able to solve with temporal parts, while the endurantist either claims that they are not a problem or claims that they have their own solution, and that the perdurantist is unnecessarily complicating something that should be simple. What do you think? Do we have temporal parts? Are we ever really wholly present? Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.